Hello everybody, Manix here. We're going to be doing a quick little knife review on an all-time favorite of mine. This is not the most exciting knife in the world. In fact, it's not a very good knife, but it's a knife that will always have a very special place in my heart. The MTech MT129. This knife is so special to me because this was the first ever EDC folding knife I went out of my way to go and buy online. I was very young, must have been... I guess I was in middle school. It's been a really, really long time ago, but I, it, it wasn't this one in particular. It was one I had a very long time ago, but just a few years ago I rebought it. Just because it's my favorite. It was my favorite design when I saw it. I always loved Arctic Camo. I loved Tontos, even though I didn't really understand what Tontos really were or how they functioned. When I was young, even when I didn't know that much about knives, I just loved the Tonto shape, and this was everything I wanted. I like how it had a glass breaker. It also had a seat belt cutter on it. I was like, wow, it's a knife that can do everything. I can totally afford it. These cost about 12 bucks wherever you can find them. I don't know what they retail at. I don't really care. It's an M-Tech knife. If you're familiar with M-Tech knives, they're very low end. They're I would say they're like D tier, not F tier. F tier knives are like really cheap, really bad, like sub five dollar. This is a D tier, you know, the uh, sub twenty dollar, in between ten to twenty dollar range. Not very good, um, but you do get what you pay for. They are functional. If you get them sharp, they will work as defensive blades as long as you're not using them very much and they don't dull on you. Once you do get the blade sharp, even though they're difficult to resharpen and they dull out pretty fast on you, once they're sharp, they will cut through flesh very easily. Um, they're just like any good knife would, so that's why cheap knives are not bad for defense, as long as you don't use them for your EDC tasks very much. Anyway, let me just get the specs out of the way real quick. Measure these all myself. Overall length is about 8.25 inches. The blade length is 3.25 inches, making the handle length 5 inches on the nose. Weighs about 6.89 ounces. This is actually a heavy guy. It's a tank of a folding knife for about 12 bucks. So what you get? We have stainless steel frames right here. Most likely stainless steel liners, although they could be aluminum, but I don't think it really matters. Well, actually, it does matter for the liner lock, but I'll get to that in a minute. I think it's stainless steel. I don't really know. We have G10 slabs right here, which is very interesting. You almost never see G10 integrated with cheap knives at all. Very rare. You usually have to be at least in like the $20 range to see G10, but no, we see them on this one, which is interesting for an M-Tech. You see, it is Torx construction here. We do have a mystery weirdo pivot screw pattern right here. If you use a thin screwdriver, you can rotate it, but it doesn't adjust very well. Whenever I get a really cheap knife, what I do is I dismantle some of the hardware, Loctite it. Hardware, did I say? I dismantle some of the hardware, then I'll Loctite them back in. Uh, because one of the problems with cheap knives is that the things will loosen up on you very easily. They usually don't have any Loctite or very poor Loctite with their screws or adhesives in general, and stuff just they fall apart on you. After you tighten them, they loosen up on you, even after normal use, even after just a few days. Another disadvantage to cheaper knives, when I mean cheaper knives, you know, I'm, usually I'm talking about sub-$20 knives. There's some knives that are around the $20 range that are actually amazing, but generally speaking, a cheap, like a bad, cheap company like M-Tech, most people would consider it's not a very good company. Uh, I do believe you get what you pay for, but unfortunately... They're, you don't get back what you put in. What I mean by that is these mystery 440 blade steels they have here, if it's even labeled anywhere. MT129. USA Design! Handcrafted in China. Um, I don't even say I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a four, mystery 440 steel. Not heat treated very well, and you can sharpen. They take a long time to sharpen. They come pretty sharp. Out of the box, they're decently sharp. Not hair splitting sharp or anything, but they're sharp. But you, they take a really long time to sharpen, and once you do get them sharp, if you do manage to get them sharp, after you cut basically anything, they dull on you like that. They dull really quickly, and then you got to sharpen them for a really long time. It's just a poor heat treatment, but you get what you pay for. Again, if you keep if you get this really sharp, and you keep it sharp, you get it nice and stropped and everything, and you don't use it for anything except for an emergency situation, cheap knives are fine for that. They're okay. But their materials are just not hardened very well. Uh, the locking mechanism on this one's not very good. It's actually pretty loose. It has some up and down play. You can hear it. The liner's moving when I put negative force on the blade. That's just because this liner is not very strong. If I were to take the knife apart and I bent this liner out and then put it all back in, I believe that would fix it. I've had knives do that to me in the past. Even more expensive knives have done that to me. But the problem is, another problem with cheap knives is if, if you unscrew any of the hardware, you risk stripping the threads, and you also risk stripping the heads. The metal is so soft that you turn it incorrectly, you can completely destroy the pattern right there, and then instead of a, a star, you would have a circle, and you'll never be able to unscrew it. So there's just a lot of weird little things like that with cheap knives that like if you try to take them apart, you may not be able to successfully get them back together. The parts loosen on you. They wear on you much faster than the more expensive knives. The blade, the business end of the knife, is going to be sometimes a nightmare to sharpen, and once you do get it sharp, it dulls very fast on you. 
those are all the main problems with cheap knives. Poor lockup, the loose hardware, a subpar blade that's difficult to sharpen. But other than that, it's cool looking. It's pretty, it's relatively comfortable. There's no uh, jimping or anything on there, not that it really matters. The fit and finish is actually really nice on this knife. You can see the edges are all beveled. See, there's rust bits in there. I have the, I have the spotlight on my uh, camera film, and I can finally see all these things I never even noticed. I haven't used this knife in a really long time. Occasionally, I do carry it just for fun. Uh, it is a functional knife. It does cut stuff. It is sharp. It's just I don't use it very often. It's one of my go-to junky knives. I just like it because I like the way it looks. So I love the way this knife looks, by the way. Um, and it just reminds me of my childhood. It's, it's something like a 12-year-old boy would love. They would love a knife that looks just like this. Look at it. Arctic camo, cool-looking Tonto blade right there, seatbelt cutter, glass breaker. What twelve-year-old boy would not want this knife? You know what I'm saying? I, I really, I just like the knife. I like the power. It's like got a, it's a very pointy, acute tip right here for a Tonto blade. There's some Tontos that are really wide. I like how this one's very good for piercing. I love Tontos. I love that uh, this sort of surgical cut motion. I don't know what you would call this, but this motion they're very good at. Uh, you can also, if you smack this against something that's called an impact cut, Tontos are good for that as well. These blades are basically good for defense overall. Any blade can pretty much do anything, but Tontos, a lot of people say they're useless. No, they're not useless. They definitely have advantages over clip and bowie style. Drop point blades, the more typical stuff. They're just not as useful as those blades, but they're a little more niche, but they certainly have their uses. Um, yeah, again, fit and finish on this knife is good. This glass breaker works. I remember a long long time ago I actually tested this glass breaker again it wasn't this knife in particular it was the same exact model years and years ago I tested it on an empty glass wine bottle in the garage I was young I was stupid I just wanted to see if it worked and it did it completely shattered it so good glass breaker it's weird how it's not on the butt end of the handle you most glass breakers use it like this it's shaped more like a, a hammer style tool there's certain glass breakers that are shaped that way is that more useful? No, I think it would have been better if they just put it right here. I, I don't know why it's shaped like this, but oh well. This glass breaker is actually part of the seat belt cutter. It's one piece of metal, as you can see right there, that's screwed in. It works almost like a backspacer. So the seat belt cutter, I'm sure that would work too in a pinch, you know, seat belt cutter, glass breaker. It's a knife that has basically everything on it. This is a very good intro knife for someone who is into knives, but not really into knives. You know what I'm saying? They don't know much about the higher end stuff. They don't know much about blade steels or materials. They just... They just like knives. They think tactical-looking knives are cool. This is the knife that can do everything. It's an EDC slash tactical folder. One thing I will say about it, it's really smooth. There's nylon washers in here. I know that because I opened this knife up a long time ago. Again, previous one I had. It's buttery smooth, actually. Really smooth. It's a big knife, too. It's a lot to hold on to. Relatively thick. The G10's a soft pattern. It's a little bit softer than the Spyderco Tenacious line, for reference. Again, really cool, neat little knife. Uh, it's just, it it's worth every penny. It's only twelve. It's around a ten dollar bill. It's not that big of a deal. But honestly, if you spent twenty dollars, you'd get something much higher. And I would just skip this knife. But I wanted to do a review on it just because M Tech in general has a special place in my heart. They always will. When I was really young, I loved scrolling through the M Tech knives because they were so cheap. And I'm like, oh, who needs the expensive stuff? Mainly, I didn't get the expensive stuff because I didn't have any money. So I got M Techs, but. This is just happens to be... A, it's one of the better m -techs, I will say. Again, I don't like how they do this. Why do they have a weird... It's not even a regular screw head. It's a mystery thing. you got to use some makeshift tool to adjust. But whatever. Once I do have it unscrewed, I lock tight, and then I get it where I want to. I leave it alone. Then it's fine. That's just a disadvantage with cheap knives. But anyway, that is it. It's really smooth. It flicks out quickly. The detent's not really well done. It's hard. You have to have a lot of wrist movement to get it open. Thumb studs are good. Cylindrical, tapered, and rounded on the top, so they're comfortable. It's a really comfortable, smooth knife. Lockup, again, is not very strong, but if I were to open this up and tighten that lock, I probably could fix it, but I think it's kind of redundant. Again, it's just a cheap knife. Who really cares? I still carry it around for novelty purposes, um, and it is heavy, too. It's almost 7 ounces. Really heavy knife for this size. Uh, but again, maybe that's that's helpful for the glass breaker. Not that I think that was intentional. It just happens to be a big old heavy knife. But anyway, that's it. Just a cool M-Tech. Whatever. Thanks for watching.